Jean Gou from Lorraine uh, to speak about singular leaves of singular foliations. I'll remind you, please, to keep yourself muted until you want to ask a question. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, what I'm going to speak about is uh, two joint works which are on the um, which are on the archive with uh, Leonid Rifkin. And of course, it's based on, well, at least one of them is based on the previous works by uh, Strobel, Lavo, and Emma myself. Um, so, in fact, the word singular foliation is a word I've been using oh, uh, long before I knew the, defin the defin definition. And uh, to start with, I will just uh, recall briefly what singular foliations are and what their leaves are. Then I will speak about, and it's, may, it's going to be mainly my point uh, today, um, some very strange levi malsef type theorem for singular leaves of singular refoliation. And my um, motto is going to be well, something a bit disappointing in some sense. Well, it is slightly disappointing. So, so can we, we have difficulty hearing you sometimes. Uh, oh? it, it might be worth uh, just for a few minutes, try turning your video, the video of your own recording off. Like this? On, uh, your, uh, on your phone. Oh, on my phone. So that we, we just get your voice, but not the video, just because the, your connection is very unstable. Really? Yeah. So is okay, it better if I connect with my iPad, maybe? Uh, well, let's try this. OK. Like this? Yeah. Good. So. Yeah, I was saying that in some sense, it's slightly dis disappointing. You may expect that uh, singular leaves have very rich local and uh, neighborhoods. And I'm going to make the point that in fact, somehow they don't. Um, so a singular foliation is a word that I've been using for years without exactly knowing the definition. I think for a researcher in the Poisson community, well, there are two well-known examples of singular foliations, which are symplectic leaves of a Poisson um, um, manifold. And of course, well, the singular foliations, which are the equivalence classes given by a Lie groupoids, where you take a source-connected Lie groupoids and you define leaves to be points which are source and target of uh, the same um, singular uh, of, of the same uh, of the same of the same element. Well, as you may know, it's probably not a good way to define that. It's much better to say to speak of the algebraids and to speak about algebraic leaves and to say that they form a singular refoliation. So now, do you hear me well? Yes. 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 We hear you very well. well. Perfect. Okay. But in fact, so we quite often use the word singular refoliations for symplectic leaves or Lie algebraic leaves. But there is a natural question what does it exactly mean? I mean, what does singular foliation mean? Oops. Well, does it mean that it's a disjoint union of submanifolds of maybe uh, the dimensions that may jump? Or does it mean that it's a kind of singular distribution, whatever the meaning is, which is integrable? Or in fact, um, or, or or in fact, fact is it nothing no of all that? that? Oh. Is it nothing of all that? But 
it's just Lee, Lee algebra. It's uh, in fact gives a general, the general, um, general the, the, the formula. Well, my claim is that in fact there is a definition, and there, have, there has been one for for years. There has been one around for years. The definition goes like this. A singular foliation on a manifold M, it's a subsheaf of the sheaf of vector fields, which has to be stable under three different oper operation, uh, two different operation, multiplication by uh, uh, functions, and stable under the uh, uh, bracket. And moreover, there is a, a condition that may appear to be a very technical one, but is extremely important for some reason. It has to be locally finitely generated. So this definition is not new. This was already uh, studied like this in the, the 50s by Stefan, Sussman, Hermann, and other authors. I'm going to come back to these authors uh, later. Well, you may find just a parenthesis. Uh, I'm going to close quite soon. Uh, you may find in the literature alternative definitions, like, well, it does the same thing said uh, differently. It's a subsheaf of the sheaf of Lee Reinhardt algebra that vector fields are. Just the same thing. Or you might one, or you might find one used by non-commutative geometers. That says that the singular affiliation were well, essentially the same thing, but they speak about compactly supported vector fields. This makes no uh, the difference. Singular affiliation in any of those three senses are exactly the same thing. And by no difference, I don't only mean that it is a similar a theory, I really mean that it is the same thing. Okay, so what does it does it mean locally? Locally, the meaning is this: we have vector fields x one, x r in some neighborhood u of a point of an arbitrary point m. Okay, those are the generators over synfty of m of the singular foliation F. And the only condition you need that these guys have to be closed under Lie bracket, which means this, if I make Xi bracket with Xj, it has to be the sum over K, and K equals one to R of the Xk with some coefficients here, let us say c i j k, which be careful now. This coefficient is not is not um, a, a number. This coefficient is a, a, a smooth function over u. Okay, this is a local a picture. Yeah. Of, um, of singular foliation. In, in fact, most of my lecture, I will, I will need to make an assumption. If you want a, a technical assumption, which is this strange thing, locally real analytic. Locally real analytic means that for every point, there is a chart on which F admits generators which are real analytic on that chart. An important point is that I do not require uh, M to be a real analytic um, manifold. I'm certainly not working inside real analytic geometry because I absolutely don't need my change of charts to be real anal analytic. They may be only smooth. I just want to have generators which are real analytic in some charts around a point. That again doesn't mean I work in real analytic geometry. Well, examples. So I think most uh, uh, 
uh, most of you are uh, familiar with that. Of course, if we have a Lie algebra, then the image of all sections of that Lie algebra through the anchor map is a singular refoliation. So in particular, Lie group actions, symplectic leaves, and of course, regular refoliations are example. And in fact, one of the most annoying uh, question that there is on this as a subject is a question that first appeared in a paper by Andrew Dakis and Zambon. Is any singular foliation, or I should have added uh, locally, the image through the anchor map of some Lee li algebraoid? Globally, it's not true for very stupid reasons, but uh, locally, the question is still open. I mean, we still don't know if any singular foliation around the point comes from a Lie algebraoid or not. In fact, it's even worse than that. Uh, we even don't know for the following very stupid singular foliation. We take all vector fields on R2, which vanish at order at least two at zero. You see? So I am on, on R2, here is a zero, and I want to take all vector fields that are zero here, but uh, moreover, have a singularity here, which is a, of order at least two. Okay, very stupid, very easy example. It's very easy to see that it's a singular refoliation, and nobody knows if there is a Lie algebra uh, defining this refoliation. So to answer Jim's question, yes, regular foliations are singular refoliations. This is why maybe singular foliation is not a very good name. And maybe we should say a refoliation like Scandalis does. Like Andrew Lidakis, Claire de Boer, they also do. Uh, they also call it simply a refoliation. But I find it very confusing to speak of a refoliation because then you may think it's just a regular refoliation. Um, anyway, here are ex examples. Yeah, <laughs> so it will be a bit long, right? Uh, okay, so here are two examples, two classes of examples of singular refoliation, which are not obviously coming from the anchor map of a Lie algebra. You take vector fields on M that vanish at a given order at a given point. In general, I have no idea if this comes from a Lie algebra or not. Or you can do that. You take on CN, you take an affine uh, variety, and you take all vector fields, which are all, all polynomial vector fields, which are at a tangent to that affine uh, variety. And then, well, polynomial is a bit annoying, so you forget a poly polynomial and you take smooth ones. But in fact, you can show, it's complicated, but you can show that, um, you can show that it's still finitely generated. In fact, it's generated by this polynomial vector field. So in fact, it's a locally real analytic singular foliation. Or you can do that. You take a, a, a polynomial functions on Rn. Actually, it should be n here. It doesn't need to be k. And you take all vector fields that kill those uh, functions. So all vector fields x so that x of phi one is zero, blah blah, x of phi k is a zero. Again, this generates a singular foliation. It's closed under bracket. It's finitely generated because of a notarianity of polynomials. But I mean, there is no Lie algebra norm behind this. And even if there is one, I'm going to make the point that there is probably no relevant one. So I'm perfectly, I, I perfectly agree with Travis that a foliation would be a better name. In general, I avoid it because, well, people may confuse with a regular one. But in fact, between uh, people who work on that, we use simply a, a, a foliation. So let's just say a, a foliation. Um, yeah, it was first introduced because of linear control of a theory. And in fact, the problem of uh, finding a uh, numerically leaves of a singular foliation is not an easy one. It, it, yeah. Okay. So 
I'm going to say something very stupid. So far, so far I have defined singular foliation through vector fields which are at a tangent to, to, the, to them. So let me, let me say now something stupid, which is a hopeful, which is a, of course very important, is that singular foliation do admit leaves. Of course, it's quite important. Otherwise, it would not deserve to be called a foliation. So how are leaves defined? First, let me define the, the, the tangent space of a foliation at a given point M. It goes like this. It's a subspace of TMM, which is obtained like this. I take all the vector fields in F, and then I take um, their, the value at the point M. I get a subspace of TMM, and this subspace, we call it the tangent space of F at M. Okay, so what is a leaf? Well, first definition, you can say that there is an equivalence relation on M defined like this. Two points in the same leaf, if I can go from the first one to the, the second one, following only flows of vector fields in F. Right, so it's all points, as the Tudor just say, we can be rich, which are attainable. I'm not sure if, if the English word exists. French, it's attainable. Um, from a given point by following the flows of all the vector fields in F. Attainable, thank you, Travis. Um, then, um, well, you can define like this. It says all connected. I should have added connected here. Of course, connected submanifolds, which such that the tangent space of L is at every point in L exactly equal to this previously defined tangent space here. Well, this would not allow to distinguish between a leaf and an open set in a leaf, so I should say maximal among those. And the key theorem that I'm just going to write in red. On this, which is often attributed to Stefan as a Sussman, but I got convinced that, in fact, it's older. It's due to uh, it is due to Hermann like this. It's for for the foliations. Well, leaves exist, and they do indeed partition the uh, manifold M. And of course, not only leaf exists, but most of them um, are regular, exactly like for symplectic leaves. So most of them are of maximal uh, dimension. So most of them uh, are, I mean, there's an open subset on M where this singular foliation becomes a regular foliation. But in fact, I'm going to give more results than just this. The next slide. Oh yeah, and of course I wanted to say just here that these two definitions are equivalent. Well, not only leaves exist, but, it's, but transversal leaf exists. I mean, that's well known for Poisson's structure and for Lee algebraids. Uh, for Poisson, I mean, for a Poisson structure, there is a Weinstein splitting of a theorem that says that every Poisson a manifold near a point, it's a symplectic manifold times another Poisson manifold on the transversal, which is zero at zero. Same thing for Lie algebraoid. There is a, a splitting theorem. I, I think it's first due to Tsung. I may be wrong. Maybe it's is older. I don't know. I'd say that every Lie algebraoid near a point it is a direct product of a Lie algebraoid whose anchor is zero as zero. Or oh, you think it's Dufour Anson, Enrique? Maybe. Yeah, maybe Dufour Anson. It's a direct product of a Lie algebraoid with whose anchor is trivial at zero times uh, the tangent space of the Lie through that point. And so you wouldn't be surprised to learn that the same thing 
ex is uh, happens for a singular uh, foliation. I'm going to say many versions of this because this is crucial for my point. Um, so, uh, but now for, for this theorem, I, I, I kind of know who I should give it to. And it's a surprising story because it has been discovered three times independently by Dominique Cerveau in 68, in, sorry, in 78, then by Dazor in 85, apparently ignoring Cerveau's paper. And then reproven again by Andrew Ledakis in Scandalis like 15 years ago, which says that, well, basically Weinstein splitting theorem still holds for singular foliation. So I'm going to give several versions of this. First, assume you have like a leaf L of a singular foliation. Then take any submanifold, which is transverse to L at a given point L. Then you can start from the, the foliation F and take all vector fields in F which are tangent to that blue transverse sub manifold. And the theorem, this is a singular foliation on the transversal uh, manifold T, sorry, TL. Well, maybe not on the wall of TL, but at least near this intersection point. Okay. So it's a kind of Dirac uh, reduction, if you want uh, an analogy in Poisson geometry. Um, okay, maybe even older, maybe Stefan Sussman, I, I, I don't know. So uh, there is more than that. So again, I, I, I take my leaf L, I take two different transversals at maybe two different points. And these two different transversals, I have two induced singular of a foliation. And well, it can be shown that these two singular foliation are in fact, transverse singular foliations are in fact diffeomorphic. So what it means is that the notion of transverse singular foliation to a given leaf is well defined, okay? And moreover, locally, we have a Weinstein splitting theorem. So locally, it is a direct product. Locally, any singular foliation is a direct product of vector fields along the leaf and the transverse uh, foliation. So, yeah, so I want to say the next slide. So, for singular foliation. Camille, sorry, yes. what, what, what does it mean, the, uh, a direct product? Good point. Uh, it's not totally obvious. So, I'm going to give, in fact, I'm going to say it, to say it now because it's, it's not totally straightforward. Well, okay. It, it may be direct product in the following sense. If you have a foliation F on M, an F prime on M prime, you can take an m times m prime, the stiff t of m times m prime module generated by f and f prime, and it is a foliation on m times m prime. So it could be direct product in that sense. Uh, I'm going maybe to give a, a more understandable way to, to, to state this Weinstein splitting theorem like this. So I, I didn't intend to do that, but let's just do that. So I am at a point M, or oh, L, sorry. And let us assume that the tangent space of L at F has dimension R. Okay. And that the whole manifold have dimension D. Okay. Then the exact claim is this. Near L, there is an open, there is, um, there is a local chart with coordinates x1, xr, and coordinates y1, y, 
d minus r. Okay, so there is coordinates like this plus there is generators of f. which are like this. Well, some of these generators are simply d over dx1, blah, 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 d over dxr. Okay. While the other generators, we will draw in blue, depend only on the variable y. So the over generators are just sum of whatever functions of y d over dy i. So i equals one to d minus r. And then there is but the first one and the second one also is like this with f2 i of y d over d minus y. And of course, you only have finitely many. Okay, that's a more down to the earth way to, to, to state uh, the equivalent for singular foliation of Weinstein splitting the theorem. But if you allow me to erase this, uh, may I? Anton, is it clear? Yes, thank you. It, it can be stated like this. So um, again, I just assume that Tf at L has dimension D, then I claim that there is a neighborhood U on which the singular foliation f is just a direct product of, of um, a ball, an open ball of dimension d with all vector fields on that open ball times, well, an open ball of dimension d, um, sorry, r here plus an open ball of dimension d minus r with, well, this some singular affiliation, which is this um, transverse, uh, transverse singular affiliation I have already uh, spoke about. Yeah, if you want a more abstract version, this may be a bit better. Is there Camille, any question? Yes. Let, yeah. Uh, let me ask you first uh, if if you can have two different foliations that have the same partition into leaves. I guess yes. This is possible, no? It doesn't mean these are the same foliations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just take an and example. They, uh, yeah. If you take a point in R two. Okay. I, I just take a point in 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 R two. And I take all vector fields that vanish at order two at this point. Then I take all vector fields that vanish at order one at this point. In both cases, there are only two leaves. This point and whatever is not this point, right? Yeah, I but see. So they are not the same modules. I see. So let me uh, uh, relate this question with the, this other. There, are, there is another approach to singular foliations uh, that uh, says that, okay, uh, a singular foliation is a partition into submanifolds such that you have a sort of a local model. So locally, you have uh, RP times RQ in such a way that uh, RP times zero is a plaque, no? it's an intersection of a leaf, and the other the, the shifts rp times y are inside a leaf. Uh, how does this other definition relate to this one? Well, the definition I gave implies that definition. Um, oh. be because we have one chance splitting of a theorem. 
but I'm pretty sure you can yeah. find examples where the definition you gave holds that F is not uh, locally finitely generated. I don't have one in mind, but I'm pretty sure such a thing exists. Okay, thank you. Okay, so to uh, summarize, there is a well-defined notion, to, make, to put it in a nutshell, there is a well-defined notion of transversal singular variation to a given leaf L, and near any point in L, the foliation is a direct product of vector fields along L with that transverse singular foliation. I think I should be slightly more precise here. The transverse singular foliation is not really a singular foliation. It's a germ of singular foliations. Okay. So, now that I have stated this, I can somehow ask the main uh, question. Well, this is true around the point. So it's locally true. Locally, we have a splitting of a theorem. Of course, there is no hope that this is going to be true along a leaf, right? There is no hope, in general, that the singular, that F near a leaf is just going to be the direct product of vector fields along the leaf times the transverse of a foliation, okay? You, you know plenty of symplectic structures, of Poisson structures, for which this does not hold. But the question Leonid and I um, uh, tried to solve is this. When is a neighborhood of a leaf isomorphic to a direct product of vector fields along that leaf with this transverse of a foliation? And when you do it like this, it's kind of obvious there is no answer. But let us add this word with a formal. Okay. When is there a formal neighborhood of a leaf which is isomorphic to a direct product of vector fields along the leaf with a transverse of a foliation? By a formal, I mean formal along L. So here I'm not going to be very precise, but this can be made a sense. I mean, you have to choose a tubular neighborhood of L and you take the inverse limit um, through the ideal of functions vanishing along L of smooth functions and of its module F, and you get some formal singular foliation that I will always denote like this, sometimes like this, to say, well, I take F, I forget whatever is far away from L, and I take the formal thing near L. So, I mean, does this question make sense? I could, we could ask ourselves the same question for Poisson structure. I mean, when is a Poisson structure near a symplectic leaf uh, the formal product of that symplectic leaf with the transverse Poisson structure. We can ask ourselves the same question for Lie algeb algebroid. When is a Lie algebroid a direct product near a leaf? And I'm pretty convinced that for both Poisson and Lie algebroids, there is no good answer. There is no clear answer. I mean, the only answer you can, you can come up with is going to be a, a, a tautological one. But, for regular foliation, there is a clear answer, at least a sufficient, a sufficient condition. If a leaf is simply, is simply connected, then we know that the regular foliation near that leaf is trivial, right? Because, I mean, the local, B, 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 the local B, uh, uh, behavior of a regular foliation near a leaf, it's a map from the pi one of the leaf to germs of diffeomorphism of the transversal. So if pi one is zero, well, it's just a trivial map. It means it is a direct upper project. 
So maybe there is a hope that there is a something. And in fact, there is. So just make a few definitions. We say that, um, we'll say that a, a leaf L is formally trivial if this induced formal um, singular foliation F along L, it's in fact the direct product of vector fields on L with this, this uh, of a formal transverse singular of a foliation. Okay? Again? Come in. If, yes? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, just to understand a bit uh, better your question. Uh, in previous slide, uh, mm -hmm. cannot you say that for question one and two, uh, the answer is yes, if the Poisson structure or the Liazio are integrable by proper group or We still don't make a direct product. Okay. Uh, integrable you want by a direct product. I don't okay. think you integrable don't by direct product. Okay. I, I don't think it's uh, uh, well, I have no clear counter example here, but I, I think uh, no, because I mean, um, uh, um, I mean, if you are looking for a direct product, then I, I, I yeah, agree with I you. But I, I thought you had some sort of local model, infinitesimal or formal model that you were comparing. But uh, so the, what you are looking is for a direct product. I, I yes, think. really a direct project. Yeah. Okay. But so again, for regular leaves, it's always true. And in fact, what we found with Leonid is that very surprisingly, for simply connected singular leaves, well, I mean, also for regular ones, right? But for simply connected singular leaves, well, I, I can give very easy conditions for which it's going to be true that the singular foliation is a formally locally a loc a trivial, a locally a trivial. So basically, I would say that simply connected leaves are quite often, in fact, uh, a formally trivial in the sense I just gave. Okay, so why do we need simply, simply connected? Obviously, we need it because of the, of the phenomena of the self-eating snake. Okay. You see what the self-eating snake here is. I have a leaf which is a circle here. Then I have a snake here, which goes along that it's, uh, it's um, this as a circle and at the end eats itself. So go, it's going after a turn, it's going inside, inside itself. So the self-eating self snake, I think, is a convincing example just to say that obviously uh, simply connected is going to be uh, needed. Because here, the circle, of course, is, uh, is not simply, simply uh, connected. OK, so to give the answer, um, let me stay, state our, uh, one of our uh, results. Let's go straight to the point. So one our result is this. So I take a singular foliation F, I'm going to need locally real anal analytic, a small assumption, which is quite often the case. I mean, most uh, foliations I know are locally real analytic anyway. Well, then I need to take a leaf, which I'm going to assume simply connected, as I just said, and also locally closed. So I don't want it to be a straight line that, um, like, uh, uh, I don't want it to be a straight line in the torus, which is dense. This kind of, I, I want this to be kind of closed leaf. Locally closed is, is enough. Okay? And then the theorem says that such a leaf is formally trivial if and only if, well, there exists some Lie algebraoid as a section from TL to AL lin. Okay, so of course, 
to make sense of this, I need to make sense of ALN. So what is ALN? Well, first, what is AL? So this is no one of the classical construction on uh, foliations, which is due to Androidakis and Zambon. If you have a leaf L of a singular foliation F, then there is a transitively algebroid on L, which is defined like this. Well, if I take F and I divide it by ILF with IL functions vanishing along L. Okay? This is a Lie algebra, obviously, because ILF is an ideal of F. In fact, it's a Lie Reinhardt algebra because it's a synthety of M of a module. It's easy to see that you can restrict it to L because whatever happens outside L is going to be killed by this ILF. And to be more precise, there is a transitively algebraic AL over L for which the space of the sections is this Lie Reinhardt algebra F divided by ILF. This is called the holonomy Lie algebraic of the leaf L. Okay. So by this, I have defined AL. So for those who have uh, followed non-commutative geometry works of Scandalis, Androidakis, Claire de Boer, this Lie algebraid is, for each leaf L, the Lie algebraid of Androidakis, Scandalis, holonomic Lie groupoid. Okay, now in AL, I'm going to throw away protective, what do you mean? Uh, to, to define a module and uh, and how I a know projective. that it's a vector bundle. Uh, it's not obvious. It's, it's because of the of the local splitting of a theorem. It's really because of the local splitting of a theorem that it happens to be uh, to be projective. A scene of uh, on, L. On L. Okay. Modules. Yes. Yeah. It's not. I, I never said it was a projective synthety of M module. And, if I say that, I take it back. Okay. Now, in AL, I'm going to divide by something. I'm going to divide by all sections here that come from vector fields here, which vanish quadratically along L. I'm going to divide basically by F intersection I square 2L X of M. So basically, I threw away whatever comes from quadrat from a vector phase vanishing at order two. And it's quite easy to see that this is again a transitively algebraid again. And this transitively algebraid over L I denoted by AL lin. So now I have defined this object. And since it is a transitive Lie algebraid, of course, there is a Lie algebraid map, which is the anchor map from AL lin to TL, which is onto. In fact, the requirement I made is just the existence of a, a section here, of a Lie algebraid section here. So this can be interpreted in many different ways. Like Androidakis and Zambon have shown that AL acts on the normal bundle. It acts on the normal bundle to the leaf L. It acts on TM over TL. Okay. In fact, what acts is the AL lin. I mean, whatever is not in AL lin doesn't act. So AL lin acts on this normal of a bundle. And uh, what somehow we are asking is that there is an existence of a flat a flat, a flat connection on the normal of a bundle uh, that comes from this ALN algebra action. Uh, uh, basically, we want the normal bundle to be flat. This is what this condition means and how it should be interpreted. Okay, so I, I think that's a really it's a non-oid thing. You don't have similar results for the algebra or for Poisson. A structure. And it has very surprising consequences, like this one, which I like a lot. Oh, sorry, maybe I should not say that. Anyway, if you have 
again, so locally closed, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing. So if you have a leaf, a simply connected leaf, for which the transverse singular of a foliation is made of vector fields vanishing quadratically at zero. It has to vanish at least at order, at least two, but it, two or more. Then it's automatically formally a trivial, right? This is absolutely not true for Poisson structure. It's not true that if I have a symplectic leaf for which the transverse Poisson structure is um, vanishing at order two or three or four, and if the leaf is simply, is simply, is simply connected, I don't think there is any hope to have a, 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 a trivial a, a product, right? But here, somehow, surprisingly, it works. Well, surprisingly or not, I don't know. That least, it's not from a phenomenon. So how to prove it? Well, uh, in fact, using the, the previous theorem is kind of stupid because it's just that AL lin, if the leaf is transversally quadratic, is simply equal to TL. I mean, it's just isomorphic to a TL because, because of, this is exactly the meaning of transversally quadratic. So of course, it's an immediate corollary of the previous uh, theorem. But I would like to give some idea of the proof. Well, the proof is based on uh, an idea which uh, Henrique and uh, um, Eckhart um, um, Meinrenken well, have, um, have worked on uh, recently, is that tubular and neighborhoods are somehow the same thing as Euler-like vector fields along L. Okay. So basically, what we are looking for is a kind of Euler-like vector field along L. Well, a stupid remark is that if a, if a manifold L is simply connected, if you take a flat bundle E, then H1 of L E is equal to a zero, right? In fact, E is automatically trivial, and H1 of L E is zero. Okay, now assume, so okay, I would just assume I have my leaf L here, and I am already given some tubular in a neighborhood. So some local subjective some. Camille, uh, you have accidentally muted yourself. Okay. Yeah, we hear you now. Okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, I mainly, I mainly make just a drawing uh, saying, um, saying, um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. Uh, so uh, basically the proof goes like this, right? So I take some tubular in a neighborhood, and I say, well, if I have somehow a map from vector fields on L to F, which does the job up to order N, I have some natural of a bundle. I mean, all vector fields vanishing at order N plus one along L divided by those coming from F, which is going to be naturally a flat bundle, hence a trivial bundle. And when the proof works by a recursion, is uh, something like this. You take, in fact, I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to be very precise, just gives a big idea. Well, I take a map from vector fields on L to F proj, and I take an Euler-like vector field that does the job up to order N, which means that my section sigma N takes values in vector fields which are linear up to order N, and which is therefore flat up to order n, because if we have linearizable flat or order one, we automatically have a flatness. Then the rough idea is something like this. I have such a section, sigma n of x, with x some vector field on L. I will just look at this modulo Euler vector field I have 
but I will just divide this by i n plus one f. I mean, all vector fields coming from f times a function vanishing at order n plus one. And it can be shown that this thing gives some class in h1 of l valued in some vector of a bundle. And well, this class has to be zero because this is zero. And out of the vanishing of this class, you go one step of a further and you go construct sigma n plus one and e n plus one. Okay, so in short, the proof is a step-by-step -step construction. That's why it's only a formal, plus to show that the obstructions that you get at each step are linear obstructions. They are cohomologic classes, and they are in some H1. So by simply connectedness, they disappear. So in fact, uh, the, 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 the theorem I spoke about is a, uh, there is a more general statement behind that, but which is a, bit, a little bit more complicated to state. It says that exactly, well, um, I spoke of, if you have a transitive Lie algebroid, it still makes sense to speak, like for a Lie algebra, of its maximal uh, solvable ideal. I mean, at each point, you take the kernel of the Ancom map and you take the maximal as a solvable ideal of that. You divide your algebraid by this. You still get a transitive Lie algebraid, which is somehow a semi-simple Lie algebraid. So I call it ALS. Okay. And the more general result we proved is that if there is a map from the semi-simple part of the Lie algebraid AL to the linear part, a Lie algebraid map, then basically the singular of a foliation is going to be the semi-direct product of that semi-simple Lie algebraid acting on some singular of a foliation um, of some singular of a foliation of the uh, transversal. Uh, so to answer your question, Travis, in fact, this, um, uh, this uh, maximal solvable ideal, it's not an algebraid, it's a bundle of Lie algebras. At each point, I have a transitive, I, I, I have a solvable Lie algebra. Well, stated like this, I cannot, I can agree it's a bit hard to uh, follow. So there is a short way, well, Maybe calling it a theorem is a bit um, sloppy, but and um, this is why actually we dedic dedicated our articles to uh, Kirill uh, Mackenzie, because we we work on something we use something that uh, Kirill Mackenzie uh, proved. Um, Kirill Mackenzie noticed that levi malsev theorem, the theorem that says that any Lie algebra is a semi-simple one acting on it's a maximal solvable ideal. It does not work for Lie algebraid. There is no levi malsev theorem for Lie algebraid. And somehow what we proved is that if for AL, at least AL lin, there is a levi malsev theorem, then there is a levi malsev theorem, whatever it means for F. This is how I think this long results I just stated before should be understood. Like Levi Malsef, I mean Levi Malsef of a theorem, like the, the, the foliation has a semi-simple part and a transverse of a solvable part is going to work if and only if it works for this Lie algebra in AL. We also uh, recover as a particular case an old theorem by Dominic Servo from 78. So in the last minutes I have, I just want to make um, a short point about a second approach on uh, neighborhoods of, um, of, um, of singular leads, just in five minutes, it's going to be very short. Okay, I'm going to be a bit hand-waving again here. So a Q-manifold, it's, well, a vector of a bundle of a a manifold M 
and a degree plus one derivation q of well super of a function which are sections of the symmetric algebra generated by um, the ei at the dual okay there is a dual notion called linf t algebroid and it's true and it can be made precise yes i didn't say it oh yeah plus q square equal to zero of course okay and there's a duality between elif theories and q manifolds and the algebraid means just e minus one is not zero and all the rest is a zero and uh, um, so um, in the previous work with Sylvain Lavo and Thomas and Thomas Strobel, we proved that behind almost any singular foliation, there is a universal Q of a manifold. A universal really means universal in some categ category. So let me give a precise statement. A precise statement, if you take a relatively compact open subset of a locally realistic singular foliation f, then f since as a bundle of a, of a function admits a projective resolutions by sections of a vector of a bundles, of several vectors of a bundles. And these vector bundles admit a Q manifold structure in some way. And any two such Q manifolds are homotopy equivalent. I'm not going to say what homotopy equivalent of Q manifolds are. But because of this unique, unicity, we can say, we can speak of what we decided to call this Q manifold the universal Q manifolds of a singular of a foliation. And here I'm going to denote it by UF. Of course, it's not unique. It's only unique up to a homotopy equiv equivalence. Okay. What this has to do with singular uh, leaves? Oh, behind this, there is in fact a, a purely algebraic uh, construction which says that Lie Reinhardt algebras over O are the same thing as Linf T algebraic structures on projective O resolutions. Resol 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 so if you want, in some sense, it's a result that doesn't belong to differential geometry, but to algebra and to the theory of Lee Reinhardt algebra. So uh, Louis Ruben is a, a PhD a student that works with me um, now. Okay, this has to do is with the first return map. I'm just going to say quick words about this. Well, for a regular foliation, what is the first return map? Well, it's well known there is a group morphism from the fundamental group of the leaf to diffeomorphism of the transversal. And with, this is a classical, and with a learning, we try to answer this, uh, 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 this uh, question. How can you define an analog of that for a singular leaf? So there were two attempts first by Dazor in 85, Andrew Dakis and Zambon. Well, we're not the first one to, to ask um, this natural, uh, uh, natural uh, question. But our idea was to use not only um, pi one, but all the pi n altogether. Let me say a few words. Okay, first. We define the pi n of a singular of a foliation like this. I don't know what the pi n of a singular foliation is, but I know very well what the pi n of a Q manifold is. It's all mapped from Sn to that Q of a manifold. And of course, for homotopy equivalent Q manifolds have the same pi n because I can compose these maps through this homotopy equiv equivalence. So in short, pi n of a singular foliation, let us say from now that it is a pi n of its universal Q manifold, okay? Okay, so it's linked, let us say it's linked with uh, Androidakis scandalis uh, holonomy uh, groupoid, and it's also linked with Tor of FR, where Tor is in the category of synth 
of L of a, of a module that can be comp computed quite explicitly. Okay. And well, our answer was that um, a natural definition of uh, the first return map for singular leaves is to say that it should be a, a sequence of group morphisms from pi n of the leaf could you uh the same uh, sound problem occurred maybe uh, by um maybe if you unmute your ipad it might help and mute okay. the other yeah okay so our answer was to say, well, what should it be, the first return map? It's not a map from pi n to diffeomorphism. It's going to be a map from pi n of the leaf to pi n minus 1 of the transverse singular of a foliation. Well, and all these maps are going to obey to some weird long exact as a sequence of which the only thing I'm going to say is that it's very uh, similar to, a, um, to an exact sequence constructed by Olivier Braik and Chang Chang Zhu for Lie algebroid of a vibration. And this is a, a, a logical because our idea is to say that, in fact, there is a natural map from the universal two manifold of F to L in the neighborhood of a leaf. And that the, the fibers of this map is a universal Q manifold of the transverse of a foliation, and then to generalize Braik and Ju. Well, at some point, we also have to compare with similar construction with Androidakis scandalis a groupoid. And just to finish the last slide, so uh, when you apply this to the pi one, we got back Dazor map. And when you apply it to pi two, it's not surprising that it's linked to chronic uh, Fernandez obstruction to integrability. And it's not trivial for at least one singular foliation for every n. Thank you for your attention. Hey, thanks for me. Uh, very nice talk. Can we uh, have questions now? Uh, you can either raise your hand uh, when you click on participants, you'll be able to see who, you'll be able to raise your hand. Uh, or you could just uh, try to unmute yourself and I'll try to sort it out. Should I share a whiteboard maybe? Uh, no, I think people will want to refer to your slides. They might anyway. Uh, maybe I'll start by asking a question. So, uh, uh, so you, you, you needed, um, in order to get some of these theorems uh, locally real analytic? Yes. I'm just wondering, so would it, is it, would it be sufficient to assume that it's a coherent subsheaf, meaning that not only is it finitely generated, but it has finitely generated ideal of relations or a finitely generated submodule of relations? Um, could be. I, I never saw it. Well, but we also would need to have finitely generated relations between uh, relations. Right. So then you would be getting the result, uh, kind of the theorem that you proved um, that it has a projective resolution. Yes. You would be using that as a, as a definition for what a singular right. belief means. Right. Do you think that that's a reasonable way to, uh, to, to define these things? Well, yes, because for uh, if you walk in the uh, holom holom holomorphic uh, case, it's always true because germs of holomorphic function are a Noetherian ring. Right. If you walk in algebraic, it's even easier, right? If you walk on CN with all objects polynomial by Noetherianity and a CZG of a theorem, you always get finite length. Uh, resolu um, free resolutions, even even not projective. No, I have annoying examples which shall not. But if you if you define them, if you were to define them as these subsheaves that have a projective finite projective resolutions, yes, uh, then it, would you say that 
that it's still a good question to ask about them, whether they come from a Lie algebroid? It's, like, shouldn't yes. we assume that it that it kind of doesn't make sense if the length is greater than? Uh, sure. Uh, even in the algebraic case, I'm not able to show that uh, every singular foliation comes from a Lie algebroid. Just take this example. Take an affine a variety on CN. Take vector fields at a tangent to the affine a, a variety. I don't know in general any yeah. Lie algebroid, algebraic Lie algebroid for which the image of the anchor map are exactly those uh, vector fields. Definitely, yeah. You can show that it's not, it's not uh, finitely general. I mean, it's not a locally free sheaf. So it's, you can show that there is no Lie algebra associated to it. No, I, I cannot show there is no, but um, I cannot show there is one. Okay. I'm not sure I, I got your question. It's okay. I think I, I think it's clear enough. Uh, we have a question from. Um, let me just look here. Uh, Misael, can you please ask your question? Unmute yourself. Okay. Maybe I have a stupid question, but I can imagine the splitting theorem applied to zero-dimensional leaf. Can you say some word? Applying to. Apply it to zero-dimensional zero leaf. Ah, zero dimensional leaf doesn't give anything. Okay. In fact, it's because the leaf, yeah, you just get that F is isomorphic to F. So for zero dimensional leaves, uh, what I, my lecture is essentially a void. Right? Okay, thank you. Okay, and then we have um, Matthias. Yeah, uh, let me ask you, uh, it's a bit related with uh, Marco's question, I think, uh, regarding this resolution that you have. In the regular case, uh, it, I mean, it is uh, uh, of large uh, zero no, or one. And do you know of uh, some instances or examples on which, uh, for instance, you have a resolution of uh, length two, or do you have some sort of control on the length of this resolution? Yes. By a Sisigi of a theorem, so, so again, for a, re a regular foliation, there is simply a resolution of length one. I mean, TF itself, it's a vector of a, of a, of a, of a bundle. Lie algebra, it's, uh, in fact, if, uh, if a foliation F is projective, as a module of a, of a function, adiabatic, um, adiabatic Lie algebraid are projective resolutions, uh, are projective Lie algebraids, for instance. And they say, yeah. If the length is one, it's called a de Bohr a singular of a foliation. It means that the foliation F, although the singular, is projective as a module of a, of a function. To answer your uh, 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 question, so, like in the algebraic case, you have the Sisigi of a theorem that says you that whatever modules of a polynomial of a function in n variables you have, there is a free resolution of length n plus one. So, yeah, we 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 have a bound which is a dimension of the, of the manifold plus one. Okay, thank you. And if, if I can ask uh, something else, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding this uh, holonomy, higher holonomy or, uh, that you are defining here, uh, this point two, where you say that the map from pi two to pi one of the tangent uh, is connected with the obstruction to integrability is already giving some intuition. But uh, I was wondering whether if you have a concrete example on which you say, okay, listen, here the leaf has a non-trivial pi two, for instance, a sphere, no? and, and then uh, this is the geometric meaning of uh, this holonomy. Do, do you, how you work out a, a concrete example, simple example to illustrate okay. this? In fact, any example given by Kreinik and Fernandes is going to give, um, to give an example. Uh, in fact, the precise statement is, so Kreinik and Fernandes constructed a map from pi two of L to uh, the center of um, 
the, the, the isotropy the algebra at that point. The map we have there, it's exactly this map composed with the exponential map from the Lie algebra to the corresponding Lie group. Uh, but by the way, an interest, a very surprising and interesting result by Claire de Boer shows that this Lie algebra with AL is always integrable. And it's linked to the fact that uh, if you have a vector field vanishing at a point, the, uh, 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 the period of the periodic orbits are bounded below. It's not really proved using Kranich and, and uh, FF and Andesh FF theorem, uh, although it's certainly equiv equivalent. Um, okay, we have another uh, question. Um, so we have a question from uh, David, David Miyamoto. All right. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if you could uh, give an example where uh, two singular foliations, which induce the same partition on the manifold, uh, but one satisfies your theorem and the other doesn't. Uh, which theorem? Uh, uh, sorry, um, like a like linearizability, perhaps, or local product structure theorem. Um, one does and one does not. Um, Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe if you took a snake. Yeah, snake, I don't know. Snake, yeah, sorry? Snake, if you took a self-eating snake, but where it approaches with a quadratic uh, speed, so that it wouldn't be detectable. Um, but it's not. Um, it's not a very simply connected leaf. Right. Because the, the simply connected leaf means somehow that you cannot jump from one leaf to another in the transversal. Right. I mean, if you have two points which are in the same leaf in, in the big manifold M, they are also in the same leaf in the transverse of a foliation. That's a consequence of uh, pi one of L equal to zero. It's uh, a good question, but uh, I doubt. Like, it makes sense when you have a submanifold L inside M. It makes sense to speak of the singular affiliation of vector fields tangent to L. But it doesn't make sense to speak of vector fields which are quadratically tangent to L, unless unless the normal bundle of L is uh, is flat, then you can make sense of that. This doesn't really ex makes this doesn't really exist. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we also have. In fact, sorry, no. In fact, I know the the, the answer. Uh, yeah. In fact, it's not uh, possible, at least in some uh, cases. I'm not going to to, to explain it now. I, I can explain you privately if you want. Um, okay, we also have uh, a question from Joel uh, Villatoro. Hi, Camille. Uh, so my question is, do you think that you can change your assumption from simply connected to something like uh, the holonomy, I think the isotropy group of the holonomy groupoid is trivial or something? Um, Well, linear, transverse linearizability, I think if you think of a self-eating snake, as, as David says, you can take um, a lift of a map, which is identity plus X square. Um, yeah, for linearizability, I think it's lost forever when it's not simply connected leaf. Now, um, uh, uh, so the answer to your question is no. Sorry, I should not answer two questions at the same time. Um, yeah. 
So, so I think for linear readability, what is going to uh, happen for non-simply connected case that you are going to have an action from the pi one of L to linear structure to, to, to local linearizations. Like the but set so, of so the example of the self-eating snake does not have trivial holonomy, right? No. It's not. Like the map from pi one of L to this pi zero is a, 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 a contraction right. like this. Took, 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 took. So this doesn't seem to be a counterexample to to this then, right? No, but I think we can get a counterexample to um, local, uh, to the existence of a section, a map from vector fields on L to um, to F, which are uh, linear in some tubular in, in a neighborhood. Okay, we, we, also, snake. we also have a question from Travis Shedler. Um, he asks, he has two questions. The first one is, are all of these maps obstructions to writing your singular foliation as a product? Um, so in particular, they have to vanish for a section of A1 lin in order to exist. Um, okay. Um, I, I must say that I'm not totally so a l i n no i I don't know but it's a very good question. Second question yeah. uh, in the case of a poisson structure, can something be deduced when the corresponding foliation um, is a product along a leaf? Maybe. So I, I I I had a guess, but I really don't know if it's true if it's true or not. Is that the local model, like if you have a transversely quadratic Poisson structure, it should be something like this. So we have the leaf, we have the transversal, and the Poisson structure is um, okay. The symplectic one plus well. Um, some Poisson structure on the transversal times a function, which is a Casimir function for T that depends on sigma. And these are examples, uh, I think with F taking values. So F basically is a map from sigma to Casimir's for pi t. Sigma, the leaf. Um, at least this is a person structure. And um, I don't think it's trivial. I don't think it's, a, I, I don't think you can make it a product of too independent. I don't think you can make a change in co in coordinate that would get rid of this f of sigma. And maybe this is a general form. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say it the answer is yes. But but is that is that a product foliation though? Uh, the foliation, yes. For which for this structure, the foliation is a product because you multiply by a, 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 a Casimir. So since you multiply by a, 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 maybe a nowhere vanishing a, a Casimir of a function, the foliation you get is just the sigma times um, the foliation associated to pi t. Ah, uh, right, yeah, if it's non-vanishing, yeah. But because of this um, Casimir of function, the, uh, the volume, is going to the, the symplectic volume might be a problem.
Thank you. Uh, Camille, would you like to comment on Rui's question that you oh. already answered? Uh, yes. Uh, so take the Lie algebroid associated to a vector field, which is uh, zero on uh, the vector field on R, which is zero on R minus on non-zero on R plus. I don't think it's locally real analytic near zero, but it comes from a Lie algebroid. So that, that coincides with what Alan uh, just answered. So you, you, you both agree. Yeah, my example is a little different in that my foliation is three leaves. Um, so he, he allows it has, to be zero on the left side too. As long as it vanishes to infinite order. Are there any other questions? Comments? Okay, um, thank you so much for your, uh, your lecture and, um, and for uh, dealing with all these questions. Thank you. I'm sorry for all the small technical problems. It seems to work uh, quite well. And even for in, my even in French in accent, which is about. really how to, to stand, I presume. Even uh, at regular conferences, there's usually technical problems. So. Okay. Have, a, have a good Thank day. Okay, thanks, everyone. Um, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.